Alright, drive is my good zone. To <clears throat> help you learn how to study your scriptures and uh, church history, we're going to use the second vision of Joseph Smith since it's the bicentennial year and since the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is ignoring it. So it's kind of important. And you might say it's essential to your eternal exaltation. <clears throat> and so we're going to go over it for you. It is important to use science methodology in your research, in your study. Read, ponder, pray, get a feeling is insufficient and faulty. You can't rely on it. You have to use the method of identifying patterns, recognizing anomalies, developing a theory to explain the anomalies, which must be testable for replication for confirmation. You must be able to produce the physical results of your theory. <clears throat> you have to use the Socratic method, which means sound arguments rather than fallacy arguments. One of the, well, there's two main errors that uh, Mormons make, or even critics make, when researching church history. And that is, one, anachronisms. That's where you impose the current practices, teachings, and interpretations on the past, on Joseph Smith's church. By doing that, you bias your research and you've ruined it. Any conclusion you create is now tainted and ruined. We can't trust your conclusions. <clears throat> the second is I uh, slipped my mind. <laughs> so Oh, it's a small sampling. It's where uh, you identify a couple of things from the past and you hastily conclude for the big picture. Uh, that's an error. So, yeah, there are those who recognize some patterns but you can't conclude on that alone. You've got to look at the big picture and see how it fits in. And so we're going to demonstrate this for you with this education. And so I have associative memory. So that gives me a little bit of a cheat sheet. I'm able to read from scripture and go, oh, I recognize that from this passage in this other book. That's associative memory. I can't memorize. I've, as a kid, I refused to memorize. And so I taught myself, out of rebellion, to have associative memory. <clears throat> and thus why I'm able to do all my videos that I've done for you by referring back and forth to the various scriptures. Whereas you guys, you memorize, if you memorized at all. 
and uh, and so that isn't very effective for gaining intelligence all you do is you've memorized you're not able to associate it with other passages of scripture and so you're kind of at a disadvantage so I'm gonna help you with how to do this and association is just recognizing patterns that's all it is and so as a kid I taught myself the scientific method without knowing that it was a scientific method <clears throat> and so to help you with recognizing patterns I've taught you about how you need to have a file for persons places things events and dates and so you don't just put a date 21st of September 1823 <clears throat> because what about the date and so that's the main uh, category under that file of dates and then the subcategory is all the events places and persons involved with that date that's how you do that so that when you come across a name then you can go to the name and see more about that particular name that's in connection in the pattern <clears throat> okay so we begin in verse 30 While I was thus in the act of calling upon God, I discovered a light appearing in my room, which continued to increase until the room was lighter than at noon day. Now, having done all the study and research for you, I can give you some cheat sheets, some clues that you would not have caught otherwise. Isaiah calls the name of our Christ Emmanuel. Matthew botches the interpretation, the translation. L is God, that's correct. And so then you have Amen that is left. Emmanuel, Amen. That's what Jesus, or Joseph Smith refers to as our Christ's name. So in section 107, to avoid the too frequent repetition of the name of God, yeah, it's Amun. And that's why Melchizedek is used to replace the name Amun because that's the Paleo-Hebrew spelling. It's the universal symbol of the sun, then the M for high priest, and then the N for king. King and high priest is Melchizedek. Melech, king, Zadok, high priest. That's a little higher level learning, but as you can see, it is beneficial. I have provided you on academia.edu my complete Paleo-Hebrew decipherment that includes how to decipher the vocabulary not just the script <clears throat> and so you can take that into the Hebrew text of the Bible now with the particular names and see how I'm able to explain that in my videos Samson, the Sun King, Emmanuel, Sun God. It's the same person, just different stories about him. <clears throat> and so, yes, Amun is the Egyptian Sun God. At noonday, even. And there it is. Emmanuel 
is whom Joseph Smith is referring us to. He's the sun god at noonday. When immediately a personage, Emmanuel, appeared at my bedside, standing in the air, for his feet did not touch the floor. You cannot use the current traditional interpretation that this is literal history. You will bias your research and you will be incorrect in any conclusion you develop. <clears throat> Joseph Smith himself refers to this as a vision. This is crucial because it makes the conclusion completely different than if you bias it with literal history. And so yes, he's defying the laws of physics. He had on a loose robe, exceedingly wide, he's naked underneath. The importance of knowing that he's human is what's bearing out here. This is the learning of the Jews. Isaiah is using the learning of the Jews. He's a pre-captivity Jew in the definition of the house of Israel. <clears throat> and that's what the Book of Mormon is referring to. Lehi is the learning of the Jews pre Babylonian captivity. And so it helps to know that Babylon culturally appropriated the Jews who were culturally assimilated into Babylon, Babylon. And thus everything was attached to the Jews when they returned back to Jerusalem. And to this day they still have the Babylonian influencing in all of their aspects of life. They are not the original Jews that they were pre-captivity. <clears throat> but the Christ concept is still the same, that it's going to be a human being, not some supernatural non-existent entity as Jesus is. That is important to know because you cannot allow Christianity to bias this document, especially since Joseph Smith in verse 19 says Christianity with Jesus is a, an abomination because they're anti-Semitic. And so, Emmanuel, Joseph Smith is explaining for us, is going to be a human, mortal, with mortal parents, both mortal parents. Okay? And in verse 32, he says, his countenance was truly like lightning. That's the symbol of Jupiter. Symbol of Zeus, symbol of Yah of the Hebrews, symbol of Amun of the Egyptians. That's the pattern. The anomaly is that they have different names, different religions, different nation nationalities. And so when you put the patterns in the chronological dates of when each civilization was developed, you see the evolution or de-evolution of Amun over time. That you have him going over uh, into uh, Greek and uh, Hebrew as Zeus and Yah, which is pictorially the same, that's the pattern match. <clears throat> and then into uh, the Roman period as well. The Babylonians also have their version of Amun as well. And so that's how you can tell, is that as humans migrated, they carried 
the Egyptian information and changed it to their culture and to their language. And he called me by name. He said unto me that he was a messenger. Messenger in Hebrew is Malachi. So that's important to know because he's going to quote Malachi. And he was sent from the presence of God to me. And that his name was Nephi. Here's where you need to use the Joseph Smith papers. You cannot pull an anachronism here. It is not Moroni. It is Nephi. You cannot say that Joseph Smith is wrong and correct him. You do not know better than Joseph Smith. The people who corrected him were malicious. And we know this because at the beginning of this visionary account, we are told that because of evil disposed persons, Joseph found it necessary to write this visionary account. And this is why. Even with the name of the church, we see why. Because it is not the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that Joseph is talking about. But that is what evil disposed persons had done to Joseph's religion. New converts were believing that it was the Church of Jesus Christ. This was the fault of the missionaries who were going out. They were misinforming new converts and investigators. And so he had a work for me to do. Names should be had for good and evil among all nations. So yeah, the evil disposed people are calling Joseph Smith Christian and calling his Christ Jesus. When Joseph Smith himself in the text says they're an abomination. He then says there's Egyptian gold plates. <clears throat> and he is told of prophecies of destruction and doom for the latter days. This is the Book of Mormon that is being symbolically referred to here. In the Book of Mormon, in 1st Nephi chapter 1 at the beginning, which had to be rewritten, we have the story of Lehi. As Nephi says, he's abridging the record of his father Lehi. and informs us that he writes in the learning of the Jews and the language of the Egyptians. And so these are Egyptian gold plates. And Lehi, in his second vision, in that same chapter, has the exact same pattern that Joseph Smith is talking to us about. So Joseph Smith is talking about the Book of Mormon and about destructions of the latter days. Lehi, at the beginning of the Book of Mormon, receives a book from Emmanuel also referred to as Jupiter because it's the star date that Lehi gets starting in verse 8 that comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 5. It's talking about the sun and the moon being in specific locations with the constellation Virgo. It's talking about 12 stars for Leo. That's on the head. 
of Virgo. And so as Leo, you have to know this, is designated with nine stars, we are being told that there are three planets that are in the constellation of Leo. Virgo is said to be pregnant with another planet. So that's four out of the five visible planets. And it's the Joseph Smith translation with the Book of Mormon that moves verse five to verse three to be part of this sign. which is the 23rd of September, 2017. This is the latter days. And so Joseph Smith, by repeating Lehi's vision with his vision, is telling us that the day that shall burn as an oven will be after 23rd September 2017 because 2000 or yeah 2017 is the first year of the latter days the birth of the ministry of Emmanuel and so yes all those gospels are not gospels because you've anachronized, anachronismized them with Christianity interpretation instead of the learning of the Jews who were the original authors. So already I've probably blown your mind unless you've been following me. This is why you use science, not biased opinion. And are you also starting to get concerned as to why the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is not mentioning this? They're already in a conundrum because they've released the Joseph Smith Papers that shows the corrections that need to be made to our canon here. And not only are they not telling us of the corrections that needs to be made, let alone making the corrections in our canon, they aren't even talking about it. And this is the bicentennial year of the day that shall burn as an oven. And, spoiler alert, as a cheat sheet, this is the final year of the latter days. On 8 April 2024, that's it, that's all. We then are supposed to start the millennium. And so these destructions are going to happen this year. So it's kind of essential to your eternal salvation, isn't it? And so the clue as to why the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints isn't talking about this is kind of self-evident now, isn't it? They're the great and abominable church. And so he talks about the Urim and Thummim <coughs> being two stones and silver bows. These are the rocks in a hat that he had. So when you know real church history, you'll know that Joseph Smith was arrested. And again, you need to have the person, Joseph Smith, event, arrested for glass looking, the place at the court, jail court, uh, Uh, southeast of the farm in Manchester, just north 
of Susquehanna River, Pennsylvania. I cannot call it Harmony, because it wasn't Harmony. <coughs> Which is uh, more information that is required when we get to that in the story here. Harmony, Pennsylvania is north of Pittsburgh, which happens to be halfway between the farm in Manchester, New York, and Kirtland, Ohio, where Sidney Rigdon, who is the major author of the Book of Mormon according to linguistic science, was. Kind of important to know. And so, yeah, this is why he's not talking about being arrested for his looking at rocks in a hat. Because that doesn't have bearing on the story he's telling us. But, the tradition is that he used his rocks in a hat, although the church only says rock, rather than the two stones that he had, and it's a nice polished one, rather than the two purposely carved rocks that were found in the well of Martin Harris. <coughs> but uh, the use of the word seer is what you need to pay attention to. Because in 2 Nephi chapter 3, Joseph Smith is said to be the prophesied seer rather than prophet, which is what is coming up for who the identity of the Mormon Christ is to be, which we've already been told he's Ammon, Emmanuel. The Egyptian sun god at noonday, who's a mortal human being. <clears throat> and so Joseph Smith, likewise, is also this person. He is the founder. And then there's going to be a capstone for the latter days here. And so this is why he's bringing the Urim and Thummim up with Sears. Urim and Thummim is attached to the Bible rather than to magic and witchcraft. And so you'd be wrong to say that he's using a crystal ball to get prophecies and revelations from, because he didn't. He was not a witch. You don't need to burn him. He, he doesn't weigh more than a duck. <laughs> or weigh less than a duck. I think it was less than a duck because that was a pretty big duck that they put in the cage next to her. <laughs> Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> and so... What's also necessary here, as we've already brought him up, is uh, Egyptian gold plates. Knowing church history, we learn that Joseph Smith Sr. was a master mason at the lodge of Canandaigua, New York, since 1818, May 7th. This was York rights. It was not Scottish rights. You need to know the distinction. There are too many people in the world who lump them all together as Freemasonry, call it all the same. And it is incorrect. Because when you hear people sing or talk about 33 degree Masons, they're not talking about Joseph Smith Sr.'s York Rites. 
because they didn't have 33 degrees. Instead, they had ranks. The seventh rank, which is important to the story of church history, is the Royal Ark. The highest, number 10, is the Knights Templar. And there we have a pattern match to Egyptian gold plates. And to a mortal human Christ with the Holy Grail. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <gasps> it's the bloodline. Blood line. <sighs> the literal descendant of King David who is to restore the throne of King David. And thus Freemasonry has their Hiram Abiff murder passion play. Murder mystery. <clears throat> sort of like the murder on the Orient Express. <laughs> Where you all get to participate. And, and so that is also needed to be included here. And why I can conclude that this is the exact same pattern. That this is talking to us about a plot to destroy us. Because Joseph Smith adds to the Malachi prophecy Uh, yeah. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall burn as stubble. Here's the added. For they that come shall burn them. There is a plot of an enemy who will cause the day that shall burn as an oven. And Joseph Smith is being warned of this. And it's from the Book of Mormon that warns of this. And the Book of Mormon warns of the great and abominable church and secret combinations in government. And we can recognize them by Lucifer's star of the inverted pentagram. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Because that passage is not in the Hebrew text. It's added. It was first added in the Vulgate text of the Bible. That was Latin. So these little things are kind of important as you go through your whole study of the scriptures. Because you wouldn't learn about that until you got to the Isaiah passage in the Book of Mormon, or in Isaiah. He does quote the 11th chapter of Isaiah, but uh, what's interesting is that the passages that he talks about, he says he quoted part of the third chapter of Malachi and also the fourth chapter or last chapter of the same prophecy. So let's go to Malachi and I'll show you a little fun thing that he's pulling here. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 Behold, I will send Malachi and he shall prepare the way before me. You see what Joseph Smith did here? And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple even the messenger of the covenant. Mortal human being the temple is the temple in Zion. 
It needs to be built. It's not built. Uh-oh. What did Joseph Smith warn? <clears throat> uh, talking about uh, reveal the priesthood by the hand of Elijah. Plant in the hearts of the children the promises made to the fathers, and the hearts of the children shall turn to their fathers. If it were not so, the whole earth would be utterly wasted at his coming. So, kind of essential to your eternal salvation, isn't it? And which church are you a part of still? Because Emmanuel, starting his ministry, 23rd of September, 2017, is going to be trying to get Mormons out of the great and abominable church. Section 103, verse 16. That's the man like Moses that Joseph is talking about here. As we get to the third chapter of Acts. The learning of the Jews, you also need to know about Joseph Smith Sr. again, having learned Jewish Kabbalah. That's the learning of the Jews. Thus, the tree of life. That's from Jewish Kabbalah. <clears throat> that is the pattern that you need to know about. Because Joseph Smith Sr., I'm the one who discovered that he is the major author of the rewritten 116 pages. And the reason for this, as to why he did it and not Sidney Rigdon, is because of that event that I told you about in Canandaigua, New York, where Joseph Smith Sr. is the Master Mason of. It occurred on 9-11-1826. This was supposed to be right before Joseph goes to be educated about the Book of Mormon plates and what's going to come to pass in the latter days by Nephi at the Hill Cumorah. Every year, four times, as he came to him, the night of the 21st into the 22nd, four times. And the learning of the Jews is that 6 p.m. begins the next day. And so the evening of the 21st is technically the 22nd. So four times on the 22nd, and then four additional times each year on the 22nd talking about the day that shall burn as an oven. And this is the bicentennial year, and this is the final year of the latter days. <clears throat> as such, you need to know Jewish Kabbalah, about astronomy, their understanding of it, thus why Book of Revelation is so important to them, because it's about star dates, telling scriptures in the form of star dates. Thus, Samson, the sun king, are giving us star dates for solar eclipses as the sun king, where death is involved. And so, this year, on the 14th of October, we are having the second day of darkness, of three days of darkness, over the United States of America. 
and it passes right over Utah. This is the story where Samson's first wife is burned to death because Samson on the 20th of April had just burned the crops of the Philistines with the two foxes. And so, yes, for government, Fox News settled their lawsuit against or with Dominion Energy or Dominion Voting Machines. Dominion Energy is the Utah company. And for religion, Emmanuel, Samson, he had his brother named Fox who attempted to hurt Samson, but Samson was able to turn it back on the great and abominable church. I've done the videos. And so the two foxes for April. So whether Holland dies or not during this time, it doesn't matter. The prophecy has already been fulfilled for this solar eclipse that just occurred. <clears throat> and so we'll have to wait if Holland dies to see if what the sign in the heavens will be. Again, using the science of identifying the patterns, identifying anomalies, running a theory, doing a test to see if we can replicate and confirm that yes, indeed, it's a fact. As I've done with all of the presidents of the church for solar and lunar eclipses now. Did that video with the solar eclipses added. I had done one with the lunar eclipses years ago <clears throat> and have also identified others who were involved with lunar eclipses such as Faust and um, what's his name? Bruce R. McConkie. And uh, technically I guess we can even include uh, Hales on October 1st of 2017 uh, because that was in connection with the latter days the 23rd of September 2017 was like a week before so it does have significance for the latter days as did Perry Packer Scott with the Tetrad of 2014 2015 so, alrighty, and uh, Hebrew is also involved with Jewish Kabbalah, Kabbalah, and uh, and so thus why I'm teaching you Paleo Hebrew, how to interpret the the passages by the names of the characters the meanings, the real, actual meaning of the characters. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think we've pretty much got it here, don't we? I've tied it with the Book of Mormon. Tied it, oh, ah, Canandaigua, New York, right. We've got to finish that up. William Morgan was there working on the book. Again, you have a person who's at the same location, the lodge of Canandaigua, New York, where Joseph Smith Sr. is. He's working on a book. He doesn't get it finished. So what happened to the book? Has it just gone forever? We'll never know. Yeah, sure. Is that how you do your conclusions? Yeah. Well, 
The book that the Batavian Press did publish under William Morgan's name, which is not the book, they were just trying to make their money back for having lost it, was about how the Master Mason takes care of his brothers, his duties and responsibilities as a Master Mason. And so from this, we know that Joseph Smith Sr., as the Master Mason, helped William Morgan flee the country. William Morgan was a Royal Ark Mason, by the way. That's why it was important to know. And it's also important to know because when you learn of the enemy, Heber C. Kimball reveals himself as knowing. He reveals himself as lying to us because he's the enemy. Heber C. Kimball was with Brigham Young of the great and abominable church of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and so, yes, Joseph Smith Sr. took on the responsibility to finish the book. And because the 116 pages were originally William Morgan's work, Joseph Smith Sr. was the one who knew best to replace it. When Joseph Smith lost his son and Martin Harris took advantage of that and stole the documents and ran back to his anti-Mason committee in Palmyra, which is why they had to lay low for a whole year. And thus why Joseph Smith tells us he got to start the book in 1827. And William R. Martin Harris insisted on being a part of it. And so thus the need to have the little rock in a hat thing going on to distract Martin Harris while Sidney Rigdon is working on the book. And that's why Sidney Rigdon didn't join immediately. They had it play out so that he joins in December, purposely giving one of his, or his congregation members a Book of Mormon, who happens to also be included in the Book of Mormon, so that when he reads it, he'll go, oh, that sounds similar to what I believe in, something that I would have written. So yeah, it's important to use science. It helps explain the big picture. And so, yeah. Uh, utterly Wasted is technically similar. It's actually utterly destroyed. We should include that here. Joseph Smith says that if you don't hearken to this Christ, who's telling you to get out of the great and abominable church, who's going to cause they that come the day that shall burn as an oven uh, he says cut off from among the people it's utterly destroyed when you translate the Greek from Acts it's only destroyed in Acts in the King James Version and so you see utterly talking about the addition to Malachi and then you see destroyed where he's warned not to show the plates to anybody. It's not the plates, it's the manuscript pages of, Mark, or of uh, William Morgan. <clears throat> because the enemy is trying to murder whoever has this information. They cannot let their plot get out because that would ruin everything. And they succeeded but the Book of Mormon got published. But they destroyed Joseph Smith, took over his church, and replaced it with Christianity and Jesus, making it all literal history instead. And thus Mormons are in bondage 
as the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants are stumbling blocks to Mormons instead because of the plain and precious parts that have been removed. Alrighty. I think that's it. So do you see how having these files helps you? Because when you come across new things, you have to research those too. You have to research the Knights Templar, York Rites versus Scottish Rites. You have to research Jewish Kabbalah. You have to research Hebrew and Greek. All of these are essential to know. And yes, it is overwhelming. It's not something that the average person can do. The most you can do is read. And it would help if these footnotes assisted you with all of this information. And the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints refuses to do that. And so, in the Book of Mormon, where it says the learning of the Jews, language of the Egyptians, the Rosetta Stone was deciphered by Jean Champollion on the 27th of September, 1822. This was identified as the learning of the Greeks and the language of the Egyptians. They imposed their Greek vocabulary, or uh, phonemes, onto the Egyptian characters. Joseph Smith is talking about imposing Hebrew onto the Egyptian characters, which I demonstrated with Emmanuel. Amen. With Melchizedek. Universal symbol of the sun. High priest. King. So. Yeah, it's important to know the historical context. It's important to know the actual history. So that you know what Joseph Smith is truly trying to get across to us. He quoted many other passages of scripture and offered many explanations which cannot be mentioned here. Strange. Similar to Nephi, when he's learning about the great and abominable church and says that there are more about the latter days that I am forbidden to write because John the Revelator wrote them. <laughs> so, that's what we can assume here. But Joseph Smith... He's talking about the latter days and demonstrates that it's the 23rd of September 2017 at the start of the latter days. And he starts off with the end of the latter days with the day that she'll burn as an oven this year, the bicentennial year. Ta-da! Also checking my notes, both Jewish... Kabbalah, with the Bible understanding of the restoration of King David, has to also include the restoration of Zion and New Jerusalem. So too are the Knights Templar involved with that, with the lore that they came to America in 1363, bought the land with the Kensington Stone receipt of sale, and uh, had markers that lead to southern Illinois, where the path of Amun, the sun god, crosses with the first and last third day of darkness. As uh, 14 October 2023 crosses 8 April 2024, right around Travis County in Texas, but it forms the Aleph, which is the Babylonian pronunciation of Alpha in Greek. And so the I am the first and the last, Alpha and Omega. Oh, well, that's what we're seeing here, is that these three days of darkness over America form Alpha. It's the Alpha site for Zion. As I'm 
now wanting to watch Stargate. <laughs> I'm really tempted to do that. I could. Uh, I'm only using the TV to watch, uh, watch shows. I have a project that I am going to do with the entertainment that I do collect. And that needs to be done on a computer. But uh, that may not be done until Zion. <laughs> That's low on the list. I have a bunch of books that need to be scanned into PDF form. Some of which need to be then converted into JPEGs for pictures. But uh, yeah, I've got too much to do and not enough help to do it. All by myself. I guess I am all by myself in the latter days. When I was young, I can keep on going. As I uh, was uh, working on the uh, thumbnail picture, I uh, realized I also forgot to include the passage of Acts, what the importance of that is. Uh, it's not just about, uh, well, that it's the man like Moses, not just about hearkening to him. It refers to Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19 which is the learning of the Jews as to who their Christ is for the latter days. And so it reveals that the story of Moses is just that. It's apocalyptic literature, like the book of Revelation. And so thus Passover and Easter are one and the same, having to do with the Exodus, which refers to the symbolism of the latter days. And thus the Gospels are actually Jewish literature talking about the latter days as well. And they're set up interestingly because they start out with 23, 23rd of September 2017 with the birth of Jesus. And then uh, it begins his ministry as they skip his whole childhood. It just goes right to his ministry with John the Baptist, the forerunner, who was Joseph Smith in symbolic comparison. And uh, then you have the Passion Week, which is Passover week, which is the eight years of the latter days, 2017 to 2024. And thus, uh, again, you're starting off 23rd September 2017 when he enters in on the, the animal, depending on whether it's a mule, a horse, uh, Camel, donkey, and ass, male ass, or Jenny ass, or a jackass. It doesn't matter. It's the pattern that matters. And uh, on Palm Sunday, when they're putting out the palm leaves, the Hosanna shout. It's because the Christ has come for the second coming. And not a single Christian knows this because they're not using the learning of the Jews. They've biased their conclusions with Christianity and Jesus. And so it's a mortal human being. And Joseph Smith, in section 103, verse 16 that I referred to, says he's going to be a Mormon from the Great and Abominable Church to help Mormons out of the Great and Abominable Church if they will hearken to him. Otherwise, they're going to be destroyed, utterly destroyed, by the Great and Abominable Church, which I've already done the videos. They've paid for our destruction. They're doing business deals with our enemies to cause the destruction. They're tampering with government to cause the destruction. They're hurting our environment to cause the destruction etc 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 so just needed to make that clear 
as part of this video. Might as well make it an hour. 